Hey everyone, it's Kat. And I'm Amber. And we are Wondering Soup. And today we come from you. We come to you. To you. From Da Nang, Vietnam. Ooh, ooh. We have made the move. It was a beautiful journey in the back seat <laughs> of a moving vehicle for two days. We are here. Yeah. And we are queer. So we are black. So we are. And we are wondering too. So on today's video, we want to play a little bit of catch up. Did you decide what we want to talk about today? Money, honey. Money, money, money. money. So we had a question. So how much does it cost? And we've done videos where we've touched on cost. I don't think we've done a video on actual cost. And let me preface this by saying actual cost will vary. Obviously. Per person, per family, per income. And country. Yep, and country. So take this, not with a grain of salt, but with the caveat that this may not be you. It's just simple, right? Yeah. So we traveled six countries so far in Southeast Asia? Uh, at least, yes. So Singapore, Malaysia, Cambodia, Thailand, Indonesia, mm -hmm. and Vietnam. Yep. So six. That was right. I'm pat myself because I've been <laughs> saying four or five. So six countries. Every one of those countries, our budget has different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, because it's country. Because of how long we're going to be there what our requirements were for staying there while there, um, and what our budget, what our money was like at the time. You know, if it was a little bit more, we could do a little bit more. A little bit less, we did a little bit less. Yeah. So budgeting while living overseas or abroad is the exact same as budgeting while living in the U.S. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit cheaper, obviously. And again, even that, I could be wrong, depending on what part of the U.S. you live in All right. and what your standard of living is in the U.S. Correct, right? Very true. So, let's start with the easiest thing, rent. In Vietnam, specifically. Yeah, it's still Vietnam. Right. So, we have lived in two cities in Vietnam so far. Uh, Hanoi for four months and recently moved to Da Nang. Uh, our rent in Hanoi was 600 bucks a month, or thereabouts, and that included everything. Yeah. Lights, camera, no. Lights, electricity, let me make sure I say electricity because our boy told us that lights mean, he didn't understand what when I would say the light bill is gonna be high. So the electricity, our cable, which we never used, internet, which we use every day, water, and gas yep. and of course the fully furnished apartment which is a two bedroom two bath had pots pans sheets uh, wash and dryer uh, balconies and we actually were supposed to have maid service but we didn't get maid service because of corona covid 19. and this is all through airbnb right it was through airbnb uh had we probably went through a landlord our rent would have been cheaper had we signed a six-month lease but we would have been responsible for all the other items that I mentioned that were included in this $600. Mm -hmm. Again, electricity, cable, internet, water, and gas. You know, all those would have been things that, that would have come to us as bills and we would have paid them individually, however they bundled the services, however it would have went. But, and we may have been required to sign a lease, a longer lease, and we weren't sure how long we were gonna be there. So right. it was convenient to go the Airbnb route. Right, we'd have to do at least a six month lease to get a cheaper rent. And by cheaper, for that same two bedroom, two bath, we're probably looking at around 450. Mm -hmm. And we were in Echo Park, uh, Hanoi, which is a really nice subdivision and um, not really in the city of Hanoi. So in Hanoi, it probably could have even been cheaper. Yeah, sure. Or more expensive. Right. It really depends on what you want. Right. I was in one of the groups the other day, and somebody was paying two thousand a month for a three-three. Wow! With no beds, I mean, no sheets, no dishes. Two thousand dollars, no way now. So, and everybody in the group was like, "Are you crazy?" So, yeah. at least I know he said, "I don't know what was going on." Probably knew 
something I could think of. Mm. Had to be new from like a country. Hadn't been any. Ah, which is crazy. Yeah, I, mean, I don't care how pretty it is. I'm not paying two thousand a month. No. Mm. I've been talking to you, babe. Don't say so. Um. No. So that's that's about it for rent. If we're still talking about Hanoi, um, and then as far as everything else in Hanoi. So as far as groceries are concerned, so that's another thing as far as rent. Um, is concerned that I think it's important to consider is proximity to places that you will be going to regularly. So in Hanoi, we were somewhat, we were kind of far from a lot of the things that we would have um, liked to go to anyway, whether we got a chance to do so or not because of quarantine. Um, so we were going to spend more getting to places. Right. Um, just because for that reason so there's that definitely to consider so we paid we actually paid a little less um, than we're paying now as far as rent's concerned but we also but we spent more on transportation um, and even groceries so well we have a grocery shop here though no that's true that's true right so I don't think groceries are expensive but you got to factor in getting to the grocery store getting from the grocery store and because we were in Echo Park Hanoi um, that it was like about 10 kilometers well eight to nine kilometers mm -hmm. from the news uh, the nearest real grocery store now we had a grocery store next door to us um, but it was a small little almost like a substation uh, I wouldn't I was liking it to it's like a mini market yeah a little bit better a little bit than bigger than a yeah, uh, a bodega in New York. You can find everything. There's not a lot of everything. Yeah. Uh, about the same size. And there were a few of those within Echo Park. But you can't grocery grocery shop there. You can't supplement what you got at the bigger grocery store. So if you run out of an item, we would run over there to see if they had it. Sometimes they would, sometimes they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but the nearest grocery store was, like I said, eight to nine kilometers. People, uh, they cost us about... Uh, it's six to eight bucks to get over there. Mm -hmm. Every time we went to the store, that's one way, and then six to eight bucks back. Yeah, and then if you want to go out to eat in town, six to eight bucks one way, six to eight bucks back, and that six to eight bucks adds up. Yep, the most we've spent on a ride so far here in Danae, just to compare, has been a dollar like 27. Right. Yes, 27,000. Yep, a buck. See, that's what I'm saying. And it's because we're surrounded by all kinds of places. So even if we do need to go out a little bit further to get to like a store that's not within walking distance, it's still not far. Right. Um, but most of what we would, a lot of what we would go to as far as on a daily basis is within walking distance. Right. Is, right. And we were lucky in, in Echo Park that there were like coffee shops within walking distance and they built it, the city or the neighborhood for that. Because they knew they were building it way in the heck out of suburbia, um, but it did. Like I said, we had to go to the main grocery store. We had we wanted to go out to eat outside of what was being offered. We wanted to see her in the way, uh, and it was a, it was just a, a hassle. Forty minute drive, uh, and people in Hanoi can't drive. I mean, that's just being brutally honest. It was horrible. Yeah, horrible. Um, the stereotype about Asian drivers is that they can't drive. They can drive. The reality of it is they don't obey any of the rules here. They go any direction they want to go, stop anywhere they want to stop, turn any way they want to turn. There are, the lines in the road mean absolutely nothing, and that's how they drive. So when they come to a country like America, we're like, oh my God, you can't drive. They can't drive. They survive. Because you can survive. If you drive in Hanoi, you survive. You can drive. But my God, my God. Yeah. I didn't know if I was going to survive. Yeah. Okay, so we got down rent costs. Mm -hmm. We got down um, transportation. Now, as far as actual grocery shopping, which we did not have not done really here yet, but in Hanoi, on average... It's been about 80 bucks. Oh, you're talking about per trip. I was yeah. thinking per month. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, per trip. About 80 bucks per yeah. trip. We do... Every two to three weeks, mm -hmm. go do a major haul. Yep. Um, That's for three people. Three people. A lot of meat, a lot of veggies, yeah. uh, starches, rice, um, cookies that we want to treat, mm -hmm. ice cream. Um, well, not ice cream. It was too far. Yeah. But uh, the basics, seasonings. It's about 80 bucks. And when I say 80 bucks, I mean like, I would get enough meat, 
Um, Cause the boy and I do eat meat, uh, chicken, beef, pork, enough for two weeks. Yeah. So I didn't want to go back to the big grocery store. Uh, we do veggies, not as much because the uh, mart next door to us had veggies. So, but we would get things that we knew we couldn't get there, like kale, yeah. um, big bundles of kale, uh, some bell pepper sometimes, really good onions and things like that. So those are the things we would do for veggies. Uh, some green stuff that we had no idea what it was. Yep, it was good though. Throw it on her plate. Flour, things like that. Because flour, for some reason, is hard to find. Yeah. And you won't ever and find baking it. powder. Baking powder, yeast. We couldn't ever find any cornmeal the whole time we were there. Um, oil, things like that. So every two to three weeks, we go to the main big grocery store, 80 bucks. Yeah, and that's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of, I'm saying that's a lot of things we got. Right. For eighty dollars, and you can think about enough for three people mm -hmm. for a couple weeks. So yeah, so depending on what your living situation is, that's going to vary. But right. we got quite a bit. Right, we we actually pretty. Mm -hmm. I, I was never hurt when we went to the grocery store. I was like, this is man, this is cheap. <laughs> um, and we ate well. You know, we ate really good. Can't yeah. complain. Cook because I cook a lot. Um, how about going out to eat? Yeah, okay, so we got a little bit crazy mm -hmm. with that. We got a little crazy because, um, yeah, we yeah. we didn't, we did. We did not, um, you can definitely frequent more local eateries mm -hmm. and and eat real cheap um, and, you know, and be fine. And we didn't do that as much, probably because we cook a lot at home, too. So by the time we did go out to eat, it was like, ooh, let's, you know, let's splurge, let's indulge and have, like, steak or whatever <laughs> Me that's really what it is yeah and have something we really want that we don't eat as much you know we don't really get on a regular basis or get at home so that's why we ended up spending more we went out and you can get really good um kind of western type uh cuisines and stuff uh in hanoi and vietnam in general but it's it's not cheap it's so. not plus cheap um eating local is relatively cheap yeah um there's Grab, which is uh, online delivery like Uber or Uber Eats. I guess that'd be the better choice, Uber Eats or whatever those other apps. Um, the problem was that we lived in Echo Park and they didn't deliver that. A lot of places didn't deliver for us. So we were very limited on our choices. So That's when true. we got a chance to go into town and really eat, we really ate well. Because uh, it was, you know, it was an excursion. Yeah. I mean, you do like a 40 minute life or death ride. <laughs> and, uh, right. So, you know, you want it to be worth You want your last meal to be, you know, exactly. worthwhile. Right. So, <laughs> um, and, and then the local cuisine is hit and miss. I'm being really honest when I say that because on the app, it looks really beautiful. And then when you get it, you're like, oh, this doesn't look anything like what I thought I was going to get. Plus, half of the descriptions are in Vietnamese. You have to go to the translator. If not the entire menu is in Vietnamese, you go to the Google Translate, you try to convert, think what it was, go back, try to order it, blah blah blah. Right. Ooh, child. But I mean, I think we should be. I think we should be honest about the fact, though, that we are probably not the most adventurous eaters. You know, we're probably not the most. And so, I for those, so. I would say so, and for good reason, though, because we don't want to take a chance of getting sick and things like that, and we can't afford to. Honestly, so I say that to say that um, there's really no particular reason other than that, that we didn't eat more local cuisine. Because when we have had it, um, even in particularly on the way here, on the way to Da Nang, we really enjoyed it, you know? And so sometimes you just have to be in a situation where you're brought to something that you wouldn't, you wouldn't usually go out and get. Um, but yeah, yeah. I'm gonna disagree. Okay, daughter. I'm gonna disagree. I don't eat street food. <laughs> Okay. But I will eat a restaurant food. Okay. I just, it, but if the outside is dirty, dirty, because Cambodia burned me, mm -hmm. right? Now, Cambodia, we were like, we're going to eat, we're going to stop, because Amber was good for stopping at a hole in Cambodia. And everybody at the table but her. And even her going, this is not going to be good. And it wasn't. But that's not true. Sometimes I liked it. Rarely. Sometimes I liked it. Sometimes I liked it. Rarely. No. Really? More often than not, I enjoyed my food fine. It was a couple of times where I was like, but. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, on, I'm sick. 
I have my my insides can't take some of this stuff. Right. That's so I'm was, very cautious. That's what I said. But I'm not. I'm, I am adventurous. Though. But I'm saying to a point, and you can't you can't right. be adventurous to the point that it is gonna endanger your health. That's my. That's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. And we just went off into a tangent. Right. But <laughs> I still disagree because I have to get the last word in for the sake of disagree. Right. I am not for this. Next. So we discussed we discussed rather costs of living when it comes to rent. Yep. We discussed food costs. We discussed transportation costs. And I guess the last thing would be what? Entertainment, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't done. Yeah, we haven't really done much of that in Vietnam. Right, because everything shut down. Right. But um but here we can well, yeah, well, the trip that we went on, we did go on the one trip right before we went to mm -hmm. Long Bay, right. and it was Check great. That video out. It was great. Yeah, look at our video of Long Bay. It was great, and we got it even. It was even better because we got an awesome deal. But at that's because COVID. Right. At price. Um, right, but it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I would highly recommend it, for regardless of the cost. cost. Yeah, highly recommend it. But um, and yeah, so even without COVID, it was still worth. The price and it probably would have been, I guess, about 200 um, for that trip if it, per person. No, I thought it was more than that. I thought it would have been more than that. Okay, well, anyway, yes, a trip a trip can be pricey, like a day trip um, to someplace like to Halong Bay, but it's definitely worth it. You go, with the, go with the top of the line, yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. Don't do the, the cheap boat. You would regret it. We saw some of the cheap <laughs> Uh I guess the other thing is visa costs. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you got your rent. You eaten. You rode around. You saw some tourist thing. How long can you stay in the country? How much did it cost? Visa costs are varied by country. Some countries you don't pay anything. You can stay for 90 days. Some countries you can stay for six months and not pay anything. Some countries you pay from the moment you enter to the moment you leave. It really just depends. Um... For instance, Vietnam, we did a three-month visa because you can't come here without paying something. And that three-month visa was less than 200 for all three of us. And that was for the first three months that we were here. Corona came and um, that, um, the, our, we went past our, we actually didn't go past our three months, did we? No, we did not. No. But had, had we gotten here and our visa would, to expire during the three months time frame that they locked the country down, which they still locked it down, but there was a time frame where they really totally locked in no flights or anything. Had our visas expired during that time frame, it wouldn't have mattered. Um, they were basically giving everybody a waiver and we were good to go. So our visas did expire in um, July. What was it, June? June. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So we had to renew our visas. Woo, child. <laughs> Had Corona not been going on, we could have left the country, did what, we, what people call a visa run, which is not illegal, but it's done. Where you go to another country for 24 hours, two hours, whatever, and then you come back in and get restamped, and you stay another 90 days, but you have to pay for that 90 days. Uh, and that method is relatively cheap. For us, because we couldn't leave the country, because once you leave Vietnam, you can't get back in. Right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, it cost us a little less than a G. And by a G, I mean 1000 For all dollars. three. For, Together. There's three of us. Right. So you go to here in Vietnam, um, you have to go through a, an agency to get your visa extended. If you're on a tourist visa, which is what we're on, we're not on a business visa, an education, we're not on any visa but a tourist visa. I'm sorry, I must clarify that. Total tourist visa. So you have to go to an agency. And they charge you. You can call around, go in the groups, get quotes. You can just go to the cheapest one. They're all doing the same service. Just go, but go with one that's most recommended because um, <coughs> things happen. Right. And you want to make sure that you're going to get your visa, you're going to get your passport back, and things like that. Yep. So it's it's costly. You have yeah. to. That's just money you have to set aside. You have to. You know that this is coming eventually. <laughs> so right. you just set that money aside for the visa, and you don't. And that's it. And right. then you go on with it. And then you can budget around that. Like, everything else comes after that. It wasn't quite a thousand. And the price is actually lowering from what I've been reading in the groups. 
So, but I figure a hundred bucks a month to stay in the country that's COVID free. Yeah. Uh, we don't have to wear masks. We're venturing out in the city, uh, and we're fine. Yeah. We 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 we're, we're free. It's cheap. It's a cheap cost for living. I tell you. Think about it. Mm -hmm. So we've averaged all that up. Our budget typically. I guess what this we should go to. Right? Our this is what we budget. we allow for a monthly budget. Right. Or what we aim for. Right. So that is <laughs> our <laughs> aim is to not spend more than fifteen hundred. Okay, I was thinking too. No, we we. Okay. I think fifteen hundred. That's, that's well, probably that's what that's I that's think. Probably close. To, right, okay. okay, obviously we're aiming for. That's what I thought we were at, but hey. No, no, I think you're right. I think we're close to, closer to the 1500. Right. Yeah, I was just, I guess I'm thinking of, okay, like when we're looking at places we could move to, or that, you know, we don't want to go over 2000. I know we've, you know, already have that kind of figure in our head. We don't want to go over that a month. But I think, yes, I think that we've been able to. Yeah, in my head, it's never been 2000. Okay. It's always been 1500. My goal was to really really cut our costs my mortgage before I, I had bought a home before I met Amber and my mortgage was like 1100 1112 and then it jumped up because mm -hmm. of taxes and things like that so it ended up being around what 121400 something like that right before we left the country and I sold it so I always wanted to be able to, to live below that or at that level yeah. and that will cover everything but then, and then, and then we have to consider travel too. I mean, we're not at that's this not, moment. That's not in the budget. Okay, okay. That's a whole different. Okay, thing. yeah. Right. Because yeah, we're not at this moment. But I mean, yeah. Right. Well, okay. travel is Sorry. that's to me that's extra. We've always set that to the side. Um, those are the things when we were living in, say, Cambodia, we want to go to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. um, right. Right. Vacation. That's a vacation. That is not our day to day living budget. How much we want to cap it at. That is actually the trip stuff comes out of a whole different account. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So I think about fifteen hundred yeah. is what we've been at every month. Yeah. Uh, we've went over if we just ate out a lot. Um, got stupid with at the grocery store, um, indulged ourselves occasionally, which happens. But because our rent and things have been sort of fixed, um, and Vietnam was really good at keeping everything really, really fixed. Um, because we couldn't order out <laughs> and we couldn't really go anywhere. So it was uh, really good at really getting a, a, a grasp of the budget and holding on to it and keeping firm at that. Now, even saying that even saying that our budget is 1500 we may go over. We may go under. Right. It is what it is. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And even things like shopping, like there's not really um, shopping to be done. Why is Amber telling y'all to tell? Hey it's girl, not. Okay. She be on the Zada like it's Amber. That was in Hanoi, people. That Every was in day Hanoi. she was jumping up, talking, going to the curry. That Guys was in her Hanoi. Name. They was on a personal. She was texting him, how are you doing today? So, yes, there were things that we needed that we had not been able to get before we got to Hanoi. And then we had Lazada there, and we were able to get those things. So I took it upon myself to make sure we got the things that we needed while we were there. And but that is not a regular thing. And other things. That's She's not a regular happy. thing. It's a way, but no, there's no, we've talked about this before as far as like clothes and right. you know, it's just, you know, it's not, the retail here is not for us, it's not, our, we are not the target audience, right. let's just say that. So anybody yeah. above a size eight, right. it's not the target audience. You're not 10, totally. you're gonna really be stretching it. Um, so factor in. Fall out. Uh, trying to buy fine clothes from other countries <laughs> in, in, in your sizes, um, it may or may not happen. Yeah. But yeah. That's about it, I guess. That is expenses. Is it abroad or just Vietnam? I guess cost of living in Vietnam. Yeah, that's definitely Vietnam. I mean, we could probably do another a video for, for each, about each country in each city. Um, yeah, yeah. Because it's gonna be, it's gonna vary. In Malaysia, our budget was, our rent was actually cheaper in Malaysia, wasn't it? Uh, it was cheaper. It was cheaper than Hanoi, or cheaper than here. Yes, right. It was yes. Than here. Um, but I guess we'll probably do another video on our costs here once we've been mm -hmm. here for a little bit longer in Da Nang. 
Right. Once we actually figure out what yeah. we're going to do. We're going to be here at least two months. Scheduled to be here in September, but we may not because COVID is on the rise. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. And um, yeah, so that is cost of living in Hanoi, Vietnam. That's probably the best. Yeah, that's what it is. Cost of living for us. Two women and a boy who stays in the room. And uh, yeah, <laughs> you want some other videos? We could definitely break down our other cities that we visited in as well. Cost of living for uh, Singapore, Cambodia, uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and Danang, Vietnam. Probably can't do Thailand because we're only there for a couple of brief visits. We definitely won't do it in Asia because we're only there for one visit as well. Nor Singapore. It was nice though. Bali is nice. I miss you, Bali. Yeah, this beach. And we're like five minutes from the beach here. Ooh. It's walking, by the way. We can see the beach from wow, it's gorgeous. Um, yeah, so that's us. That I'm Kat. I'm Amber. We are wandering soup, like lesbian expats, traveling expats at that. And uh, we'll see you next week or the next video, I guess. We're gonna try to start doing these more regularly. You know, try to get them scheduled so you know when exactly to expect them. Life has just been taking us, and we've just been flowing with it, and it's been a great experience so far, right? Mm -hmm. Like our lunch today. We went out with the brothers and sisters of the name for uh, brunch. Yeah, big up. That was a beautiful experience. And thanks to Marcy for inviting us and for all the lovely men and women that we met today. It was a great experience. And yeah, it's been a great, great, great transition to the name. We'll get into that on the next video. All right, thanks, y'all. Peace and love. Peace.